back everybody to my vlog it is september 7th wednesday at 2 p.m pacific time 4 p.m central standard time if you're watching live that's what's happening right now and today we have red we met with welcome back to my vlog thank you Ann. how you doing today red i'm doing chipper <laughs> chipper i'm here yeah that's good I'm, I'm glad to hear chipper uh how's your weather nice very yeah. nice it's cool and all a little overcast but nice awesome so red uh today we have a pretty interesting subject family secrets trial in chicago yeah. yes and uh you're gonna tell me about it actually the audience is gonna chime in i know that everybody's here today um, I see them all in the comments right now. And guys, if it's your first time here, smash the like button, hit the subscribe down below. If you're interested in the Chicago outfit, mob history, you've come to the right place. Uh, that's what we talk about here. That's what we put together. And uh, sometimes we get off on tangents. Really, we do. We end up in, in left field, way the hell out in the stadium somewhere, actually out of the ballpark. Who knows, down the block and around the corner. <laughs> we try and stay in that playing field. We really do, Red. Yeah, it's like trying to get into your show. <laughs> it's trying long, to what? To your show, it's a long line. <laughs> yes, yes, I would say it is. Mm. Um, but well, welcome in, everybody. Uh, Nicholas Como, I've not seen your name before, so welcome in. Toy Mafia, hey, how's it going? Uh, Larry A, 6214, Mike Alexander, Big Tuna, Street Stories, everybody's here. Keith Helton, even Julie M, it's good to see you. So, you guys, Bobby Bag of Donuts, of course he's here. Don Ciccio doesn't ever miss an episode, neither does Jim Magnifici. It's Roots, and Miss Can't Be Wrong, little Miss Can't Be Wrong, she's here with us too. So, Homer God Sanders. God bless y'all. Thanks for showing up. Well, well, yeah, thanks for showing up, guys. We're going to have a hell of a day. Uh, Terry Carlino new name new i think i said that right uh yes you did yeah bsj mczag jan from loch ness we got loch ness with us again in scotland again yes tell us mcjag zan have you ever seen the loch ness monster if you live there has it ever come out <laughs> tell us in there. See, look at this we're talking family secrets and now we're talking loch ness monster that's what i mean you never know what's going to happen on this show <laughs> leanne rolling alongs here ricky delta good to have you guys with us so Family Secrets Trial. Let's start because we're going to talk about what, what was supposed to be revealed, uh, what was revealed, what ultimately, ultimately was destroyed as well. So but let's in the, beginning, in the beginning, I want to start out with something. Um, I don't know. Frank kind of, this is, was his show with you, and he kind of said that uh, he was never on the witness list. He was. As a matter of fact, newsreels and everything else said, Frank Collada is going to be here. Frank Collada is going to be here. Frank yeah. Collada will be testifying. Right. And he was in Chicago. He wrote a book at that time. And he just never took the stand. Now, now his version was they flew out to see him. Mitch Marsh flew out to see him out in San Diego. And he said, I can't offer anything. That was his version. Gotcha. So. Not trying okay. to be mean. I'm just stating a fact. Sure. What Frank told me was something about they didn't want him to put him on because he released his book. And when you have a book out, that's probably, that's probably why word for word, they're going to take from your book word for word and, you know, cross examine you with that information. And I opposed him going, going on the stand. I opposed, I told Mitch, if he goes on, I go home. So interest. Now, 
For those of you who are listening who know absolutely nothing about the Family Secrets trial, Red, sum it up in a nutshell. What exactly, how did this whole thing come about? Because Joey Lombardo, Frank Schweiss, a lot of guys were involved. Yeah, what had happened was um, in two, the year 2000, they started working on it. And 2002 was the inception of it. And I believe that's when they got Frank Calabrese Jr. to roll over and wear a wire. Or maybe they were doing it in between that time of 2000 to 2002. I didn't know about it. But I was contacted by Mitch Morris. Actually, I was contacted by Tom Moriarty. He told me to call Mitch Morris. I wrote about it in my book. But um, what had happened was uh, they had known for years who killed the Splotcher brothers. They'd known about that for years. And they just couldn't put witnesses together, eyewitnesses. And finally, they got eyewitnesses. They got Nick Calabrese. They got, they got all the witnesses for all the trials that they needed. So they made a, a mega trial out of this thing. And as far as who, how many people were there, a lot of people pled out. There were only five defendants that actually went to trial. But on that indictment, there were a lot of people they used to come in on a regular basis and plead out, plead out, plead out. So that's a, a question that I posted, that somebody asked and I posted up there. Uh, how, they said, how many people? I really don't remember how many. I mean, I'm sure you can look it up on the internet, but um, there was only five defendants at the end. Uh, but Carmine, Carmine's left. Carmine's not here anymore. Carmine's over there now. Right, Red? Over where? I don't know where. Carmine left? Really? <laughs> you don't remember that scene? That was Axis. How you doing, Bill? <laughs> uh, so, hey, chatting with Stax. How you doing, Bill? Nice to see you. Uh, guys, if you haven't checked out uh, uh, Bill Stack's show, go over there and check out Chatting with Stax. He's got a really uh, interesting uh He has some interesting, and interesting guests. He does. His, his guests are very interesting. And that, and that guy's pounding it, man. Bill is at it like every day he's putting up a video. <laughs> Seriously, you know how much work this is. Oh, so yeah. I, I I can appreciate what you're uh, what you're doing. Uh, Don Chichio de Portalo. I have no idea what the hell you guys are talking about. In the, and I'm not even going to try. Do you know why? Because if I try, <laughs> Red's going to go, oh, it's Francis Brady. Francis Brady, that butcher boy. It just doesn't get away. I love it. Oh, guys. So, so Red, back to this, uh, uh, the the trial. When was the first, I mean, how did, how did it come about? It was just, so Frank Calabrese wore the wire in jail. Yeah, uh, I that was back in, in 2000. Mm -hmm. It really didn't go to trial. It was supposed to be 2006. And then Frank Schweiss and Joy Lombardo went on the lam. And so it didn't go on until 2007 until they actually captured him. But um, the indictment came down, I think, in 2006. They had swabbed him for DNA and several other things. They had Joey Lombardo on um, on um, DNA evidence. Uh, they had his fingerprints on some title that was used on the Danny Seaford murder, um, which is the most damning thing that he, he was, other than racketeering, um, that he was convicted of. But there were a lot of other things, too. Um, the Calabrises, all the people they killed, um, Nick and uh, Frank Sr. Uh, Frank Jr. never never murdered anybody. I know he never murdered anybody. He, he did a proffer, and he testified for the government. But there, there were a lot of people that uh, were there that took the stand like myself um that just added you know a tidbit of this a tidbit of that till they had a seven course meal and they could really try a lot of different cases and close the books on a lot of murders that have been committed and probably the biggest one that stood out was uh tony spalaccio mm -hmm. um his uh how he was murdered um there's a lot of controversy because nick calabrese couldn't he was he was under a lot of pressure on the stand and there was no way that he could remember every detail and he got some cross-examining that was blistering he didn't have the answers for it 
Uh, he couldn't remember. I mean, he'd been through a lot and he converted as, you know, to a government witness after they had him dead cold on John Farrakhan's, uh, or the glove for the murder of John Farrakhan. So he knew he was going away. He knew he was going away. He got, he got a very good deal though. Got a very good deal. Scott H says Joe Lombardo testified. So did Frank Calabrese senior. They, they all did. did. It was a major mistake, major mistake on their part. They should have never, they took a shot. They took a shot because the government proved their case. Right. Hmm. Fecarada. Sorry, did I say yeah, something? Did I incorrectly say Fecarada? Fecarada. Okay. okay, so. Uh, so. But there were a lot of details that were left out, you know, different details. How many people were in the basement? How many people were upstairs? How many, you know, that's on the Splotcher murders. Um, uh, Jimmy Marcello was on trial for his life. And boy, he got nailed with everybody testified against him. And it was, and one led to the other one. It's like, like I said, it was a smorgasbord. They had peace here, peace there. And they finally put it together and had a dinner. And it was the last supper, believe me. So, so we really, really will never know who was in the basement. No. With the brothers. Not everybody. You won't know everybody. Now, we know some people were there, some people that weren't. But nobody, I you know, Nick Calabrese knows probably by now. He's been debriefed. So they probably showed him photographs and said, was this guy here? Was this guy here? Was that guy here? Was that guy here? They probably mm -hmm. went down the list with him. But all these people are dead now. Except Nick, he's still alive. Hey, Mob Up Podcast. What's going on? He said, uh, what's up, Red and Adam? I don't believe I've ever heard of Mob Up Podcast. Have you, Red? Yes, I've made comments on their, on their station before. Okay, I, I, I haven't watched their show. Is it good? Yes, very good. Okay, so guys, you want to check out Mob, Mob Up Podcast, check it out. Uh, by the way, Red, um, if you come out to Vegas, which Red's been out to Vegas, and Red's done this. He's, oh, yeah. he's on board and uh, and checked it out, and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. But if you're in Vegas, or when you're in Vegas next, be sure to check out the Vegas Mob Tour. And use it's the promo code it's Mob Law. It is great, folks. Of the screen. It's, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It really is. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never before seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he's on. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the dry one. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit The Rat Pack is Back show. Experience Vegas the way it was meant to be. So if you use the promo code MOBVLOG, you guys get 20% off on that uh, uh, on that tour when you come to town, which makes it less than a C-note. Come on, you can't afford a C-note while you're in town. What's the deal? <laughs> uh, Red, I've been involved with that thing since its inception 17 years ago. I don't know if I ever told you this. I used to, for $8.50 an hour, I used to drive a sign truck up and down the Las Vegas I Strip. Thought. I, I swear to God. Yeah. 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 Uh, Old video, I mean, that sign truck. <laughs> um, Robert Allen put a big billboard on the back of a pickup truck. 
Oh, those were the days, man. I a meager loved, start. A meager start, man. <laughs> I love driving up and down the strip, man, especially in the summertime. Do you know what? I mean, you get to – if you that like people – That little car was – oh, man. I was looking at it and saying, what kind of car was that? How would you get your feet in there? Mm. Hey, so, Red, I got a, a huge announcement. Um, so, everybody, uh, you know about the Vegas Mob Tour. We have teamed up. Vegas Specialty Tours has teamed up with – Bucket List Golf Social Club, and have put together a private jet mob tour. Private jet mob tour. That's right. What the hell is a private jet mob tour? Well, I'm going to show you guys what a private jet mob tour is. Here it is. There is a link in the description, by the way, guys. Um, there's a link in the description that you guys can check this out if you'd like. But uh, this is the history of organized crime, mafia, gangsters, and prohibition. It is uh, going to run from April 29th to May 5th of 2023. It's limited to 12 VIPs. And we're going to be going to New York, Chicago, Kansas City, Las Vegas, possibly San Francisco. We'll see about that uh, if we do or not. But the uh, highlights, we're going to hit every spot in every city. We're going to go around and see every one of the places. You guys go to the link. You can check it out. We have the itinerary put together. Uh, it's going to be on a Gulf Stream 4 or 5, uh, possibly a Falcon 7. We'll, we'll see. But it's going to be a private jet that we uh, take out. The uh, company has a variety of them. We're going to – here's your schedule of everything we're going to be doing. Day 2, New York. Day three, Chicago, four, Kansas City, five, Las Vegas, and six, Las Vegas. We're going to be having dinner in the nicest restaurants. We're going to be luxury transportation in the nicest limos, the finest buses. And um, and there's going to be some um, there's going to be some gifts that are given out, and there's going to be some celebrities. Let's call them celebrities um, that maybe they've been involved with the mob themselves and have some stories. Maybe they have been involved with movies um, that have to do with the mob. Who knows? I can tell you this, though. Gary Jenkins is going to be one of the guests on the tour. And uh, when we go to Kansas City, we'll be having uh, dinner with Gary Jenkins. And uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, he uh, runs the Gangland. Uh, it's Gangland Wire, correct, Red? Is the name? That's correct. Right. Gangland but Gary, not, you said a guest. He'll be a host. <laughs> He'll be on there with you. <laughs> Be be, there, there is nobody who knows more about Kansas City mob than him. No. So That's a Kansas City man. The New York sure. man's going to be announced later. And the We're gonna is going to be announced people later. As people get scheduled. And uh, and I'm going to be hosting this, uh, this tour as well. So I'll be with everybody as we go from place to place and meet person to person. And uh, this this thing is, is getting a lot of... Uh, uh, it's generating a lot of buzz right now. So there's uh, and chances there's, are, chances are, I'll be running my blog while you're gone and relaying we're gonna, we're gonna, what you are here. So, so guys, whether you can afford to do this or not, you're gonna get to do this with Mob Vlog because Red's gonna be hosting while I'm traveling and going live at different places with different guests. It's gonna be cool, guys. So whether like I said, this is a once in a lifetime bucket list experience. And um, if you can afford to do this, great. And I know there are people that watch the channel that can afford to do this. So uh, if, you, uh, if you're interested, like I said, fill it out. If you can't do it, you're still going to get to do it, though, with my blog. So pretty cool, guys. I, and I'm super, I was super excited to announce it. And the guy that we, uh, the, the company we partnered with to do this, and the guys involved are also very, very excited uh, to, to make this, this announcement and to let you guys know the process as it unfolds. So um, anyway, I hope that, look at the comments. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Can't afford it. I'll see you in Vegas. Be, uh, yeah, it's been cool. um, yeah, it's, it's uh, forget my education, my daughter's education. I want to go. Cindy Workman's cashing in the daughter's education fund to do this. <laughs> this sounds great, Trace. Yes, it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. So um, was that your truck? There'll be several trips. Trip. This is going to be a one-time deal, is it? There'll be several oh, trips. No. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is going to be reoccurring because, again, guys, the people that, that we're trying to get on board with this right now, um, they're, 
they're 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 big names that people are going to want to multiple. We I can would, only I would, say, well, I, I would want I would want to sit down and have dinner with them. It's a problem to have, Red, that you can only take ten people or twelve people on each one of these because there's going to be a hell of a lot more than ten or twelve people that are going to want to do this. So we're going to be doing multiple, uh, uh, and we'll be releasing well, those. Be on, you'll be on a plane. You'll have a, a a news cameraman there with you. Well, po well, we'll see exactly um, okay. exactly how it works. Linda, hey, how you doing, sweetheart? It is so good to hear from you. Red, I haven't seen Linda in forever, man. She's uh, she's she's from well, I know her from back home. Anyway, hi, Linda. Nice, nice lady, Linda. I I really love Linda. She's awesome. Um, guys, let's get back to the family secrets trial. So, uh, if you got by, the, if you guys are interested, I have a question the for you. Here. You broke up I a little, a Red. Question. I marked a question for you. Okay. There it is. Brett, did they soften them up upstairs with drinks before going downstairs? Okay, so yes, thank you. Yes, they relaxed them, told them everything was okay, nothing to worry about. They had a few scotches, and who then were, showed up in the those, autopsy. Who were the guys upstairs? Did that come out? Which bosses? Because I I was heard it was a few you know, bosses. It wasn't really – it wasn't uh, – Sam Carlisi came up, and some other people came up, but – it, they never said uh, DeFrangio was upstairs, but he was. He was the acting boss at the time. And he was upstairs. And he was kind of, you know, holding court and saying, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Everybody's talking to each other. And they had a few scotches together, which showed up in the autopsy. I mean, the scotch showed up, uh, it was within 24 hours or, of their death. So... Yes, they were softened up. So they softened them up upstairs. Hi, Joe Collada. It's uh, good to see. You. It sounds like an awesome tour. Yes, indeed, Joe. Hi, Joe. This is going to be a. I, I I talked to Joe a little bit about this, and uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. What can I say, guys? Um, if you hold on, if Jim Magnifici, if you refuse to participate in a hit, you're probably next. It's the mob's way yeah. of keeping insurance that you'll probably keep your mouth shut yeah i would i agree 1000 yeah. percent. but the people that went there the people that went there it never went into um the actual <clears throat> that particular murder or double murder double homicide they never went into actually what they did what they did was jimmy marcello was driving these people around and he was the acting boss at the time. Marcelo was. So he was upstairs too. But he was driving them. He picked he, he picked Tony and Mike up, but he also picked up Nick Calabrese and other people. They were waiting on a corner someplace. He'd pick them up. He'd drive them there. they go down to the basement, but they never saw all the people until they were there. So it was very difficult to actually know exactly what happened. Other things that are missing... There's a lot that's missing, a lot that the public never knew, and they probably never will know because there's no documents to prove it. Um, there was never so a Family Secrets 2, and if there was a Family Secrets 2, a lot of things would have come out that didn't come out. Oh, Larry Lapper, DeFranzo, DeFranzo was not the boss. No, it was Jimmy Marcello. Jimmy Marcello. Um, Jimmy the man. Marcello. Mooch was there? Louis de Mooch? Yes. Yes. He he it, that was the first murder. Nick Calabrese testified that he tackled Michael Splotcho by the legs, held him by the legs, while Louis put a garrote around his neck and, and choked him to death. And then I a guess uh, a garrote. What's a garrote? It's it can be made out of rope, it can be made out of piano wire, it can be made out of logger. Usually it has a two little things on the end, like you'd have on a lawnmower to pull it to start it. And once yeah. you put it around somebody's neck, you just pull it tight. That's it, they're dead. Jeez. You never heard of a garage before? 
No, I never heard never heard of a garage. See the things that we learn on this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody asked where the link is uh, for that uh, for the private jet air. Paul Gross. Uh, I just put it in the description in case you can't see it in the description. I put it in the comments rather. So, uh, you guys can get to it. Um, it's right there. There is no way Adam has never heard of a garot. LOL. Pam, it's true. I never heard of a garot. Okay. I've heard of a piano wire to put around somebody's neck, but I've I've heard heard, Southern people, uh, I've heard Southern people say garot, garot, garot. Yeah, they are. They don't pronounce it properly, but it's garot. Got it. Dave Maliska, member of the channel. Uh, did any surprises come out of the trial, Red? Um, not for me. I mean, I, I knew some. I knew a lot of. I knew. I knew all of it. It's just that they didn't have any witnesses until they came and put the trial together. They had some witnesses, but not enough to, to actually make a. A conviction where they thought they had a good case. Mm-hmm. It was a landmark case. <clears throat> I say it was a very big landmark case. Well, Julian, hit the like button, please. Everybody, hit the like button. Um, big Mo, it's what they used on Luca Brasi. Ah. Yeah, and and oh, the guy brother, they when when they stabbed his hand, he choked him. Now I got it. Got it. Okay, totally understand now. <laughs> Um, John, John Benet Ramsey used a garage as a murder. Yeah, I guess technically so did John Wayne Gacy with that thing and he twisted it. Yeah, and that's it a garage. Right. That's a right. garage. Yeah, okay. So, uh, it's we we put the rope on him, Jeff Stone, because it's another way to say it, right? Yeah, <laughs> believable. I, all right, did the FBI know? That the outfit were planning the Spilatro brothers' murders? No, they did they not. Did. They had no idea. It was done very secretive. The, their bodies were never going to be found. It was weren't supposed to be. No, they weren't supposed they to be because they they screwed up the the whole thing, and they killed them off one time one at a time. Big John Ferricata. Yeah. <laughs> Fecarata. Outfit boss. Uh, hey, you mean Fecarata. You said Ferricata. It's not Ferricata. It's Fecarata. Fecarata. Francis Brady. Francis Brady, that butcher boy. Where? <laughs> <laughs> uh, outfit boss uh, Red, didn't Frank uh, Schweiss tell you that he was in the basement to kill Tony? Yes, he did. He told me that in like four weeks after it happened. Mm-hmm. Or after they found the bodies. Oh, and that's a whole that's a whole another story too with that's the bodies. We went down that already. Yeah. Well, the you know Actually, we could talk about it in the after show. Yeah, we can. We could talk about it a little bit more in the after show. We're going to my channel. Yeah, we can do that. Um, what the what's the um, um, what's the topic over there today? Uh, the topic is what what would have happened if Joey was out of jail? Joey Lombardo was right. out of jail. Which is pretty interesting. During, and, yeah. yeah. I think and, we're, and we're probably going to talk a little bit about Tony in that. Because show. he was in prison at the time. So, um, three feet of paracord, two chopsticks, disposable and easy to come by. William yeah. Kirschberg, that's a garage. And reusable. <laughs> and reusable usable too so disposable more important dna uh larry lapper this guy keeps saying ferricata instead of fecarata Fecarata. it's the other way around sorry larry (laughs) oh that's too funny twisty they could call it twisty so red um do you think that if uh if the bosses didn't kill tony that he would have kept running around vegas doing his thing no i think he was headed home vegas was played out uh the skim trial killed everything that skim trial was before yeah his family secrets 
So Vegas was dead. I mean, they took over the Stardust and everything. Everything was, it, it was dead in Vegas. So I think my guess and my opinion is that, uh, and it's only a guess and opinion at this point, from other people that I talked to, U.S. attorneys, whatever, that he was going to come back and try and take over the outfit. He was going to try and be the boss. Now, then they'd have to pay him tribute. I mean, he was the boss. So that's what I thought that everybody said that he was going to do. When when did the skim trial happen? When did that go down? Because I know uh, it was obviously before Family Secrets, what you said. Yeah, the skim trial, I think it was all the way back in... 82? 2002, 2002, 2000. No, 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 no. They got a lot of their information. They got a lot of their information out of that trial. When did they raid the Stardust? I don't recall. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm curious. Was it before they killed Tony? Oh yeah. No. So it had to, yeah, Tony it was, was way before. Way before. Tony was 86. So right. when? So the the, the car bomb. Also, also what's his off. name? Um, um, Lefty. Had that gone. Was he was gone. He was already gone. He already left Vegas by the time this happened, right? Yes. He went to San Diego, and later on, he moved to Miami, back to Miami where he used to work as a odds maker. Now, him being an informant for the for the FBI, Lefty, yeah, was he feeding him information about the skim operation at the Stardust, or did Lefty? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He cooperated one hundred percent. Okay. Hmm. His uh, his Lefty. call sign his call sign for the uh, yeah he was a dry snitch his his call sign was uh, Achilles like Achilles heel mm -hmm. that was his call sign Achilles his code name with the FBI nineteen ninety two I'm getting eighty two and I'm getting eighty four Ricky Delta says it's at eighty four Greg Powell uh, says it's got to be somewhere in there because Lefty's car bombing was in eighty two. So it was after that. Um, had to be. Uh, Might have been in 83. The bosses went to prison in 1986. Same year Tony was killed. They were being right. sent. Right. It was right around that time. I know the trial went on. The indictment went on. Then the trial went on. And it was quite a deal. Um, Keith Osborne, can a maid associate like Tony Spilatro jump from that low position and into a boss's seat that way before he wasn't in a very low position at the time he was in a high position because he'd been around for a long while uh um, him, him and joey were equals joey uh, lombardo were equals. he was a little bit ahead of joey oh, he was because a little bit ahead of joey but joey went away to prison the way it was and explained that's what I'll be talking about on my show later on is what happened while joey was in prison the way frank described it was Joey and Tony were equals, but because Tony was in Vegas, Joey was higher than them. But right. had it been the other way around, then Joey was in Vegas, Tony would have been above Joey. Yes. So that's at least what, what Frank said. Frank well, Tony, Tony went out there in 72, 1972. So to 1982, that was a, that's 10 years. That's a good 10 years. Um, Joey Ayupa. Keith Osborne is a good question. And the Genovese family did it, jumped a, a soldier up to a boss, and that was Artie. Artie Here Artie. we go. Here we go. <laughs> I don't want I don't want YouTube to hear me say something I'm not saying. Anyway, the guy's name was Artie. He went to an acting boss. Yes. So uh, anyway, was the family secrets trial? open to the public to view in person, Red. Good question. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. There were lines, just like, it was so terrible. And when they brought me in, uh, you know, up to the courtroom, um, I had two FBI agents in front of me, two FBI agents on each side, and two FBI agents behind me. Poor John Drummond was sitting, there was lines of people. Yeah. You had to take a number to get in. He was sitting there, and I wrote about it in my book, but he... Um, reached up to shake hands with me and they knocked him down and he looked at me with a, a pathetic look like, ah, uh, you know, I'm, I, all of his children was trying to, you know, say hi to you. Poor guy. But they, didn't, they didn't want me talking to anybody. 
Don Ciccio, uh, I don't ever remember a hit with that many guys involved, especially the top guys. That's correct. They they cut off the heads of the snakes. They really did during that trial. Instead of going after the the actual people that just hit, you know, just did the the murders and the disposing of the bodies, they went after everyone, the bosses, everyone. Why they went didn't go after DeFranzio? Obviously. He was a dry snitch too. He made some kind of deal. Um, I don't ever remember a hit with that many guys. I think he's talking about Tony Spilatro, Michael Spilatro, with all the bosses at that house oh, and all the no, people down no, in the it's all. very rare. It's very rare that they would, but it took a lot of decision making to put all those people together. Oh yeah, I mean, they all had to get together before it ever happened and say, "This is what we're going to do." The bosses, anyway. Um. William Kirchmayer, uh, Lamborghini. Really love Lamborghinis. <laughs> have to have to own one. No, really. thank you for the car. You know the you problem with, with those cars? They're too freaking small, man. I'm six foot five. You know what That's I mean? That's the only problem. You better drive it every day because I'll tell you what, those carburetors really clog up bad. It needs a tune up once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're driving on the road doing, you know, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. Wife called her husband. She said, honey, she said, the car won't start. I got a problem with it. It won't start. There's water in the carburetor. He said, what the hell do you mean there's water in the carburetor? How would, you don't even know what the hell a carburetor is. She said, I'm telling you, there's water in the carburetor. He said, you don't even know where it is. How the hell do you know that there's water in the carburetor? Where in the hell is the car? She said, it's in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> There's water in the carburetor, guaranteed. <laughs> uh, uh, Jack Napier, Frank Collada said in my blog video that he would have he wouldn't have let Tony get whacked. Frank would have went there armed. That's what Frank said. I remember, he wouldn't have let Tony get whacked. He'd have went with him and made sure. You don't know I, until you're in that situation. There were no. so many people involved in that. I don't know if anybody God couldn't have stopped it. I no mean, way. it was. God couldn't stop it. I, I like the way you're thinking now. That never heard that expression. God couldn't stop it. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, unbelievable. Guys, if you're new here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button down below. We talk about the Chicago outfit history on this channel, and uh, it's a it's a lot of fun. But now you never know where the hell we're gonna go. Sometimes today we've stayed on topic pretty uh, pretty close anyway, and and you know what. It's 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 the prescribers, they uh, they help us stay on topic. So if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have a show. Jacqueline Moore, Red, have you ever talked with Nancy Spilatro? Never, never. And I, I you know, as far as somebody having somebody like and that, and I wouldn't I'm, bother her to even put her on the show or on Adam's show for one reason: her husband was killed. Her husband was killed. Like it or not, that was her husband. Yeah, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it changed her whole life. I'm positive about that. There's no doubt in my mind. It changed your whole life. Yeah. It, it, it's somebody's father. It's somebody's brother. It's somebody's uncle. It's somebody's husband. It's somebody, you know, these aren't, these are humans. They're people. They're like you and I, you know, they, we all hurt the same, you know? So anyway, you guys come out here to Vegas. You guys got to do the Vegas mob tour. Honest to God, you got to do the mob tour. It is, um, it's a ton of fun, really is. Even Big Mo came out here and did the mob tour. And uh, he had a good time. So did Scott H. So did Paul Whitcomb, Red Wim Matt. Listen. You guys ought to take this tour. It was fantastic. I recommend it 100%. I love the Frank videos. Those were great. Personal stories. Yeah, I mean, personal you were stories. Very close with Frank Colada, and you get you get the vibes. You got to do this. Oh hell, the best part of my trip out here. It's uh, everything about casino that you wanted to see, and it's cool to see see it all. This was like fucking authentic. It was amazing. Awesome, awesome. Oh, unbelievable! Adam is just first class. Great information. Great tour. Fascinating. 10 out of 10. Take the tour, you'll have a great time. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to have a awesome. fun time, too. Absolutely great.
It was awesome. I would definitely recommend it. It was good to learn about the history. It was awesome, man. I enjoyed it. Fantastic. I, I, I loved it. What did you think, Mo? It was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was great, great. Very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. It was great. It was awesome. It really Highly was. recommend. Amazing. <laughs> I do it. And I mentioned it earlier, but uh, guys, Vegas Specialty Tours has teamed up with the Bucket List Golf and Social Club. And uh, it's it's going to be something. We're doing a uh, organized crime tour, private jet mob tour, basically. We're going to go all across the country, city to city, everything from New York, Chicago, Kansas City, Las Vegas. We're going to have dinner in the nicest places, the finest restaurants we're going to go to. Uh, and we're going to meet some really cool people along the way. Uh, the link is down below, guys. Uh, get in there and uh, you want some more information about it, sign up. Put your, put your name down. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. Uh, and we'll send you more information. And as things are released and dates are announced and uh, guests are announced, uh, which our first one is slated for April 29th of 2023, we're going to do it. And we're going to go across the country. We even have, we even have a we even have a couple of networks that are interested in, in uh, being involved with this. So it's going to be pretty cool. Go to the link down in the description below. And uh, yes, I'm still doing the Good Springs Ghost Hunt. If you're in Vegas. Which is and you great, that, which is really great. I went on that one too. Yeah, it's, they're all fun, man. Do you know what it is? It's the... Uh, it's the uh, I like that little bar out there. <laughs> it's, it's fun, man. What can I say? It's fun. But I'm I'm really excited about this uh this 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 new experience. And even if you guys can't afford to do it, you're gonna get to do it right here on Mob Vlog. Red's gonna be hosting, I'm gonna be traveling, we're gonna be going live in different places, talking with different guests. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So um Red, I think that we have had one heck of an afternoon today. Hey, we didn't do to the guys do the wheel. That wheel thing, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. So you want me to come up with a question now? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And last week we talked about what <laughs> we talked about the Bronx. Do you remember? We talked about the Bronx, the Bronx tale. We talked right. about it's better to be feared or loved and yes. which bosses were to be feared and loved. Yes. And if you guys have been paying attention to this channel at all, at I all. Have the, I have the question. Okay. What did Jess Pal Palmetary say in the movie? Is it when he was asked by Collagen, is it be better to be feared or loved? Right. That's the question. Yeah, but that's too easy. That's way too easy. That can't be the question. That's too easy. It's not too easy. Nobody's answering it. <laughs> Joe Huber. They're all being feared, 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 feared. Better to be feared, better to be feared. Feared. It lasts longer. Feared, feared, feared. How come nobody's getting this? Seriously? I said it was a good question. You said nobody's it was. Nobody's getting this answer? French Tickler was the answer. Julie M got it. Holy shit. All these people went through before Julie M came up with both. But just let me go back and look. Right. Yeah. Julie M, you're the, you're the winner. Julie Where's M. Today? She got it. Call in, yeah. Julie M. You got Julie the number. Julie got it. Scrolling across the bottom of the screen, and I just put it in the comments too. So, call the number. We're gonna have you on, and uh, we're gonna find out uh, what you're gonna win on the wheel of a deal that cannot be refused. Thanks, Bobby Bag of Donuts, by the way. <laughs> Great name. So, guys, Robert uh, 0969. How you doing, guy? Robert. So if you guys want to join in on Red's channel, we're going to be over there talking on his channel in, um, in just a few minutes. So we get discussing what if Joey Lombardo didn't go to Supermax. Yeah, Florida. or didn't go away, didn't, didn't, didn't get convicted. He, yeah. he wasn't in Supermax right away. He went there later. Oh, really? They talking about that on my show. Yeah, we're gonna to get to that. That's that's good subject. I didn't, I did not know that. So good meanwhile, subject. I want to make an announcement. Um, oh, I, I forget who it was that uh, 
one last week that I shipped the book out to. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. He lives, oh. Oh. He lives in... Um, uh, <laughs> he lives in South Carolina. And your book was shipped. I mispronounced your name a couple times. I don't want to do it again. But it was shipped. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, Red. We have Julie M. on the phone. How are you doing today, Julie? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Not bad at all. She's been on the show before. Where are you from? Remind us. Uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Iowa City, Iowa. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Red remembers you as well. So, Julie, do you want to spin the wheel today? I sure do. All right, here we go. The wheel of a deal you can't refuse. And we're off. And let's see, Julie, it looks like you're winning a pick. A picture? Yeah, a picture. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and... Um... Do a don't uh, do it. You want to auction it? Auction? Okay. Yes. All right. So she already has a picture. So oh. let's auction. Who will give five dollars for a picture? Five bucks. That's what we're looking for. Five dollars. A picture of Adam and I in Las Vegas. Picture of Red and Adam. We sell them for twenty bucks on the on the site. If you guys wanted to support the channel and not donate any of your money to YouTube and give it all to us, John McShane says five dollars. Five dollars. We hear five. Do we hear ten dollars? Ten dollars. It's going to a charity of your choice. And five dollars. Five dollars. Five. Give me ten. Give me ten. Come on. Hey, what Somebody are you doing? Out. City. I am a retired paramedic. Retired paramedic. My father was a paramedic. He was a firefighter paramedic. Then we got eight. We got eight. We got eight. We got eight. Do I hear ten? Do I hear ten? Do I hear ten? That's awesome. Right. That's fair. Very cool. Right there, he, he bit eight. There, there's, there's really no higher service, Julie, than being of service to somebody. And um, and, and thanks for doing that with your uh, your time. Keith That's, Osborne, 20. So, somebody's got to be there, right? And to help the people. I enjoyed it. I really liked helping people. That's awesome. Very cool. Keith Osborne has $20. Anybody, $25. You can get it on the website for 20 bucks, just so you know. All right, so if you're going 25, it's because you want to give to a charity. Yes. Oh, it's twenty dollars and one one cent. There we go, one penny. <laughs> right, it's got to be at least twenty-one bucks, Brian. You can't do one penny more and go. I want it. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. come on. You want to go it's twenty? Go it. twenty-five. It is. It's, it's worth it. Yeah, we're gonna do. Right, Julie, how you doing? It's gonna be to your uh, your uh, liking. You know, whatever uh, um, uh, charity you want it to go to. It'll go to that charity. Unless it's your own charity. Then you can't. Right. Okay. 20 bucks. 22 bucks. Do we hear $25? Anybody? We're going once for $22. Brian Beyer. Trace said thanks for your service, Julie. Oh, you're welcome. Brian Beyer, going once. Going once. Uh, Robert, if you guys were tanked in the picture, it would sell for more. You know, or if we were nude, Slapsy Maxi wants a nude of us. What the hell is this? Where do we find these people at? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Brian Beyer going twice for $22. Going twice. $22. Do we hear any more? Going twice. And sold American. Don't say it because as soon as you say it, somebody pops up with more money. Okay. All right. And sold. All right. We have ourselves. Uh, Brian Beyer just, just. No nudes. I promise you it's not nude. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, Julie, we want to say thank you for having you on today. And um, thanks for uh, helping us raise some money for, I'm sure is going to be going to a very good charity. Uh, and uh, you, you have a wonderful day. God bless. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Brian Bayer, call in. We got the line open for you, buddy. And uh, as soon as you get done calling in and we get a... Uh, uh, we get a number for you. We're going to uh, send you some information. And um, well, you're done. right. After the bidding close, Keith Osborne goes 24. <laughs> Brian Mayer said, please, no nudes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Keith Osborne pops up after the sale. 
Sure. We waited. I'm telling you, we waited until 254. This came in at 255. So Brian is Brian the winner. Rush, number, what number to call? Oh, Brian. The here's the number. Man. man, here's the number on the it's scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now. You see that number across the seven, bottom? Seven zero two six seven seven nine zero one five. I don't know who Lavicia is. Would love to see Adam Flowers and Lavicia do a show. Philip Spade, I have no clue who Lavicia is. I'm going to look it up, but I, I don't know who it is. Um, all right, so Brian, you can call in anytime. Turn your YouTube down. You, Brian. So I'm excited about this this tour, this new tour, right? I mean, it's got me. Yeah, I am too. I am too, Adam. This nobody's is, ever nobody's ever done one like this ever. Oh no, 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 no! Nothing like this ever has happened. This is going to be really, really, really cool. It's going to be really cool. La Vecchia. Sorry. Oh, uh, you know what that means. Francie Brady, no. the butcher boy. Where? <laughs> Again. Vecchia. I, La Vecchia. I don't know who La Vecchia is, but I'm going to look this up. Is this tour next year up on my website? There we go, folks. Okay, Red, we got Brian with us. Brian, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Wonderful. We're smiling. It's a it's a nice. nice it's a nice day. Thanks for joining us on the show today. And um, Brian, where are you from? Uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And Brian, is that really your picture right there? In the yes, uh, sir. In the Monica, that's what you look like. And who's the little little person you're holding? <laughs> I sent uh, Brian an autograph book, I believe. Both of my older, I have five children, but those are my two older daughters in the picture. Oh, nice. Didn't That's I send you a, a, a book, Brian? Yes, you did. I thought I did. I remember your name, buddy. Yeah, we talked on the phone one night for quite a while. That's right. I do remember you. <laughs> yep. So where's this, uh, where's this money going to be going to? What's the charity? I am going to actually let you guys choose the charity. The veterans. The veterans. The veterans. Dis veterans. Disabled veterans. Disabled veterans. That's where we're going to go. Okay. So, Brian, can I text you at this number? Absolutely. Awesome. I'm going to text you, and I'm just going to need your email address, and we'll get this all straightened out. Sounds good. And your and your mailing address so we can get this uh, photo off to you. So, thanks again. How, how long have you been watching my vlog? Oh, since the beginning. Awesome. Long time, long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it's probably been about, well, it's been over a year ago, Red, since you and I talked. And That's then correct. you uh, sent me your book out. Awesome. So it's been quite a while. I still remember you, though. <laughs> I, I know you do. You got you got a hell of a memory. I ship out thousands of books, but I'll tell yeah, you what, I remember you, Brian. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, hey, Brian, you have a great day. And uh, I'll be texting you in a few minutes. And uh, you're going to come over and watch uh, on Red's channel for a little bit? Absolutely. We'll see you there. Have a great day. All right. You too, guys. Boy. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Okay, Red. I'm telling you, everything's fun. All these great things have to come to an end. So, yes, all good Red. things come to an end. You have a great day, Red. Thanks so much for doing this again. You're welcome.